I remember one day a long time ago helping a classmate with some graph problems before a test. At one point he became frustrated and exclaimed, how are we supposed to learn all these graphs? I answered him with, we aren't, we're supposed to learn how to read them. Once you know how to read graphs in general, you can figure out the practical meaning behind any number of them from various fields of study by applying the skill rather than an attempt at memorization. This is the first video in a new series on learning how to read, understand and extract information from graphs. We start off with a simple line chart and will consider the axes, the units of the metrics in play and how to use them to reconstruct the practical situation represented by the graph. We will cover increasingly complex topics like proportional charts, correlation, limits, derivatives and integrals in future videos, so please subscribe if you'd like to see more. Also, let me know in the comments if there are specific topics related to graphs that you would like me to cover. Hello and welcome to the main course, dish up some food for thought. So here we have our first graph, quite a simple line chart. We're only going to work with straight line segments for now, no curves yet. On the left and the bottom we have our axes and each one is expressed in a certain unit. The axis on the left is usually called the y axis and it represents displacement in meters in this example. The one on the bottom is usually called the x-axis and it represents time in seconds. The point where the axes cross is called the origin and in our case it's the point x equals 0, y equals 0. As you go right on the x-axis, time increases and as you go up on the y-axis, displacement increases. So what do all these line segments on the graph mean? Let's visualize it using an example without the mathematics first and then we'll take another walkthrough while performing some calculations. Say hello to Sam. He's preparing a lunch by the waterside for a few people he'd invited for his birthday celebration. He needs to walk back to his car to fetch a second backpack with snacks. Sam starts strolling towards his car. Keep an eye on the graph to see how his progress is represented there. After a short while, Sam arrives at the sign. The sign warns against the birds in the area that will ransack a picnic when people are not around. Since Sam already has some food placed on the table, he decides he will start walking faster in order to prevent a possible ransacking. He is not aware of the birds already encroaching on his sight behind him, but at this brisk pace he quickly arrives at his car, where he gathers and dons his second backpack. Upon turning around, he notices several birds circling his sight, so he increases his walking pace even more. Luckily, the birds have not yet descended onto the food, and they seem to be circling wider as he's getting closer. When he gets back to his starting point, he continues arranging the food and snacks on the table. Okay, we have used plain English language and we have constructed a process or physical scenario that fits our simple line graph. How do we convert this into mathematics now? Let's look at the first line segment, which goes from the origin to x equals 10, y equals 10. We will attempt to apply the basic calculations of addition, subtraction, division and multiplication to the scenario to see what we can learn from it. Firstly, for the x-axis we started off at 0 and moved to 10. If we subtract 0 from 10, we can say that this line segment represents 10 seconds in time. Following the same reasoning for the y-axis, we see that it represents a distance of 10 meters. So, Sam moved 10 meters during 10 seconds. Mathematically, we can divide the change on the y-axis by the change on the x-axis. This is often expressed as y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1, where 2 indicates the endpoint and the 1 indicates the starting point, and we call it the slope of the line. For this line segment, it equates to 10 meters divided by 10 seconds, or 1 meter per second. Note how we include the units in the calculation. This is an important part of the thought process and should not be neglected since it tells you what physical measures you are considering. Practically, this means Sam's speed, or his velocity if you add the direction of his movement to the speed, equals positive 1 meter per second. When he gets to the sign, he stops for 10 seconds. 
During this time, his distance from the origin does not change, which is shown by the value not increasing on the y-axis. However, time still passes, so we keep going on the x-axis. If we calculate his velocity for this line segment, we get 0 meters divided by 10 seconds or 0 meters per second. The slope of this line segment is therefore 0 or horizontal. When he starts walking again, his pace is twice as fast as before. He walks for 40 minus 20 equals 20 seconds and covers 50 minus 10 equals 40 meters. This gives us 40 meters divided by 20 seconds or 2 meters per second. Compare the slope of this line segment to the slope of the first segment and you will see that it's steeper. The steeper the slope, the more meters per second Sam's velocity for that line segment. When he gets to the car, there is another period of 10 seconds during which his distance from the origin does not change, or in other words, where his velocity is 0 meters per second and the slope of the line segment is 0. Then he starts heading back, but at 2.5 times his original speed. Since he's in quite a hurry now, the slope gets even steeper now, but something else also happens. His velocity changes direction or becomes negative. The line proceeds downwards on the y-axis. When Sam gets back to the origin, his starting point, we can calculate the slope of the line as 0 minus 50 meters divided by 70 minus 50 seconds which gives us minus 50 meters divided by 20 seconds or minus two and a half meters per second. This is a good example of it making more sense to think about negative numbers as in the opposite direction rather than less than zero. Note how the slope of a straight line remains constant over the entire length of the line. If you perform the calculation of the slope for any part of the line, you'll obtain the same answer. For example, taking the second half of the first line segment we calculate 10 minus 5 meters divided by 10 minus 5 seconds, which is also 1 meter per second. So we can calculate the slope or velocity at every point in time and convert the original graph of displacement over time into a graph of velocity over time. Let's take a fast walk through the scene one last time to see how this new graph unfolds. You will notice that each straight line segment in the displacement over time graph leads to a constant or horizontal line segment in the velocity over time graph. What's interesting about this second graph is that you can now multiply x by y, where we previously divided y by x. For the first part of the journey, x times y becomes 1 meter per second multiplied by 10 seconds, which gives you 10 meters. Note how the seconds unit cancels out to leave only meters. This corresponds to the 10 meters Sam walked from his starting point to the sign. For the second part of the journey, we multiply 2 meters per second by 20 seconds, which gives us 40 meters, which again corresponds to the distance walked in that leg of the journey. Now, when Sam walks back from the car, the direction of the velocity changes to negative, so the y-axis of our graph extends to below the x equals 0 line. The velocity is now minus 2.5 meters per second, which we multiply by 20 seconds to get the minus 50 meters that Sam covers on his return journey. I hope you found this introduction insightful. Please leave some feedback. In the next video, we will consider curved lines and what they mean for distance and velocity, as well as the additional concept of acceleration.